My name is Avianan Tharaja. I am a clinical genetic counselor at Penn Medicine's Basser Center for BRCA. And I'm joined by my amazing colleague, Derek Mann, another genetic counselor here. And we wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, some commonly asked questions and searched terms related to men in BRCA. Because it's December, uh, and though the mustaches are gone, the need for men's health awareness persists. Uh, and so our wonderful digital content coordinator, Erica, surveyed some highly researched topics in the space of um, men's health and um, found that a lot of people had questions about BRCA and what risks uh, a BRCA mutation could pose to men, for example. And so today we're going to be tackling some of those. Um, for those of you who aren't as familiar with BRCA, we encourage you to visit the Basser website, that's basser.org slash BRCA, for a brief overview. Another great resource is His Breast Cancer Awareness, and that can be found at hisbreastcancer.org. So one of the first questions that we very did commonly see is a question about is male breast cancer genetic? So one thing that we definitely wanted to start off with and really clarify is that difference between genetic versus inherited. We know that really all cancers are caused by some sort of genetic mutation and that's really what's driving that tumor or that cancer to develop. And we know that the majority of cancers are caused by more random, sporadic mutations that can happen to anybody throughout their life. But more smaller subset of these cancers are explained by these inherited mutations. And another question that we got very commonly was, can men have these mutations and be affected by those inherited mutations? And that's a question that comes up in clinic quite a bit as well. Uh, in fact, many patients report being told some way or another that the breast cancer on their father's or paternal side of the family um, doesn't impact their risk as much because it's coming through their father's side. Um, however, this is a common misconception. Um, while it's true that the overall risk of developing cancer is lower for a male with a BRCA mutation versus that of a female with a BRCA mutation, men carry the exact same risks of inheriting a mutation or passing on a mutation. Uh, and so we know that these mutations do not skip men. Both men and women can inherit and pass on BRCA mutations. Absolutely. So that common question I always hear is, oh, it was my dad's sister. Can this even affect me if it's coming through my dad's side of the family? Absolutely. So we always want to make sure that within these families that we do find BRCA mutations, that we are testing, we are talking about this with all male relatives. And that's because as Avi just explained, these can go through men, these can be passed on from men. And we also know that there are increased risks for cancers for men that have these BRCA mutations as well. One of those cancer risks is an increased risk for male breast cancer. So men do have breast tissue and can develop breast cancer. And we know that for the general population, you don't need to have a BRCA mutation to develop that type of cancer. We know that in the general population, roughly 0.1, so roughly one in a thousand men will develop breast cancer throughout their life. We just know that men that have a BRCA mutation would be at an increased risk for developing that specific type of cancer. Depending on the mutation, this can be as high as a 10% lifetime risk to develop male breast cancer. So Derek, one of the questions that is commonly asked is what percentage of males get breast cancer? Yeah. And so it's a very good question. And again, it really comes down to if somebody is born with one of these BRCA mutations or not. And so we know that really any man can develop breast cancer at some point in their life. And we know that for individuals that are not born with a BRCA1 or 2 mutation, they can still develop breast cancer. And that risk tends to be about a 0.1% lifetime risk. So roughly one in a thousand men would develop breast cancer throughout their life. We know that for men that do have one of these BRCA1 or 2 mutations, this would cause that risk to be increased. And we know that, again, depending on the type of mutation or the gene that's affected, this can be an increased risk of up to about 5 to 10% lifetime risk overall. So we know, again, it does depend on a number of things. If there is a BRCA mutation, an inherited BRCA mutation that somebody's actually born with, and what that mutation is, which gene is affected, that would really affect what that risk is.
another question that came up rather frequently, which, uh, which ties in to um, male breast cancer, is actually how to detect breast cancer in males. Uh, because there are some differences between breast cancer um, screening recommendations in males versus those, of, um, those uh, pertaining to females. Um, and uh, so we wanted to, to address how it would work if, let's say, a man were to test positive for a BRCA mutation or have an increased risk of developing male breast cancer. And the way I like to think about it is that there are three tiers um, to breast cancer screening in men. Uh, the first is self-directed. Uh, so that includes breast awareness or essentially noticing what is normal in both feeling and appearance in, in your breast tissue and what's abnormal. Uh, and that uh, also tying into that um, is self-breast exams, uh, which both men and women can do. Um, typically, men are recommended to engage in this type of self-directed screening if they're at an increased risk of developing male breast cancer. Um, so it's not something that all men um, necessarily have to do. Um, the second tier of um, breast cancer screening in men is physician directed and uh, that typically involves an annual physical exam, uh, a clinical breast exam with a physician. Uh, and then the third tier is uh, mammography. So men can get mammograms as well and it really depends on, uh, again, their level of risk of developing breast cancer as well as their age and amount of breast tissue that they have uh, when it comes to determining whether or not someone needs a mammogram. Uh, so all of this to say it is ultimately the level of risk, uh, for example, whether someone has a mutation in BRCA or not or a predisposition to developing male breast cancer that determines what screening recommendations would be made for them. Yeah, absolutely. And we know that it's not, unfortunately, just male breast cancer that there would be an increased risk for, for men that have a BRCA1 or 2 mutation. There is also an increased risk for prostate cancer in men that have one of these mutations. And so Avi, one last question for you is, if somebody does have questions about their own personal history of cancer or their family history of cancer, how can they reach out to somebody to ask these questions? Yeah, so we provided a very brief overview today of some of the things that are concerning for, uh, for cancer risks and some of the things that might lead someone to get evaluated by a genetics provider. But ultimately, if anyone has uh, any questions at all about how family history impacts their own risk, whether or not they need to get genetic testing, um, they can contact a genetics provider. Uh, findageneticcounselor.org is a fantastic tool um, for being able to, to locate a genetic counselor in your area for in-person or virtual consultation. Um, additionally, um, the, the BASSER website for those who are more local um, is also another way to get in contact with uh, genetic counseling services. And so ultimately, if people have questions, um, especially if they have a history of male breast cancer, um, a, a strong history of female breast cancer, or any pancreatic or ovarian cancer, um, they should, should reach out to a genetics provider. Yeah, absolutely.